Hello and welcome on Watches TV and we have a sweet unboxing video for you today with the launch of a new Ressens timepiece and it's unbelievably cool. So let's immediately open this uh, simple box I have in front of me and again a little surprise in here with this uh, 3D printed globe using the hand logo uh, of the brand as the main pattern and you can open it and there you go. Here we are, here's the Type 3 BBB. So it's not a totally new watch per se, but they've pushed the design dimension of the Type 3 with a two-tone minimalist approach. And uh, we'll get to this in a short while, but since uh, we haven't talked too often of Ressens uh, timepieces on this channel, well, it's the perfect occasion to come back on their main particularities, both aesthetically and mechanically. So for those that already know everything about Ressens and the Type 3 in particular, well, you can skip part of my speech and come back where I will describe in detail the specific uh, features of this uh, Triple B version. So Ressens was founded by uh, Benoit Maintien, a Belgium designer, not a watchmaker. And this is probably the main reason why he and his team have been able to come up with their very own way of expressing time, something first revealed in 2010. Well, it definitely did some uh, outside of the box thinking and I'm pretty sure at the time many around here probably told them that what they wanted to do was simply impossible. But that's precisely when the fun begins, a moment of mechanical exploration into the unknown and boy if there is a lot of R&D behind these watches. So first of all, Ressens watches are made of two distinct parts when you speak about their mechanism. So if you look at the watch on its uh, flank, below the middle case part, this is where you will find the mechanical automatic movement, in this case an ETA 2824-2, meaning a well-proven uh, workhorse. So obviously the complexity of this watch doesn't reside in this uh, base movement, it's really what is happening on the upper part where the magic happens, triggering all those time-telling indications because as you can see, everything moves on the dial side and I'll describe all this again in a sec. But what you have to realize is that the entire upper part is immersed in oil. So if I take this uh, decomposed part uh, here, well, you can see the case's middle part made out of uh, grade 5 titanium. But actually, uh, that is the only element maintaining the rigidity of the watch. Since on top of it, you will find this uh, dome sapphire glass filled with oil and more or less uh, the same glass on the bottom. But since it's been uh, fully uh, blackened, one could think uh, that it's metallic. And this element is actually extremely important because it's with this case back that we will wind and set the watch since you have no apparent crown. Again, we'll detail all this very shortly. So to summarize things, normal mechanical movement below, working in an air environment, a hermetic uh, titanium membrane slash case in the middle, and then another set of complex gear trains on the upper part moving the various time indication discs, and all this fully soaked in oil from the membrane up to the sapphire dome and there is no space for any air bubble. So now you see me coming, right? How does the time information coming from the base movement, how is this information transferred to the upper part since there is no mechanical connection between top and bottom? Mm, now it becomes quite sexy, right? Well, this is achieved through a magnetic connection and on top of the minute wheel, you will find a specially developed component uh, with magnets facing one way in order to not upset the proper functioning of the watch, in particular its hairspring. And on the other side, the oily side, where you will find a similar component recuperating the kinetic information and passing it on to this proprietary development called ROX and standing for Ressens Orbital Convex System. Yeah, sounds almost like we're using a rocket science vocabulary here. A system made out of no less than 215 components, so quite complex to say the least again, and you can easily figure out the number of hours spent on this. But then comes the next big question. Why does all this need to be immersed in oil? And here we go back to the very essence of Ressens and Benoit's initial idea of proposing a new way of looking at time. Well, actually, I'm pretty convinced that it would work without this oil, but from a design perspective, you can get, an, well, you do get an amazing result, almost like an optical illusion, where everything you see seems to be at the same level, on the same level, I mean. With any other watch, even with a super ultra-thin one, your eyes will detect the variations of height between, the, for instance, the hands and the dial, giving you a sense of depth, ever so minute it can be. But here, the characteristics of the oil has a huge effect on the light reflection, and it really seems like you're looking at a 2D 
leader drawing it has this Kindle effect, if I can say so, and it's really surprising. There's something almost odd but mighty cool to look at, and this is precisely a point which is even further accentuated with this new uh, BBB version. And this new model really goes minimalist compared to previous models, where you could see more colors and color differentiation between some of its parts. So some of these watches looked a bit more technical, but here it's basically black and white, and for the first time, black PVD has been applied on the titanium middle part, as well as the back uh, case also painted, like I said. And you get this uh, extremely pure looking object, one that uh, you like to touch and hold like a beautiful pebble, and nothing distracts you with this uh, to the point design. Okay, let me explain very quickly how you read the time and in a certain way there is a bit of a regulator aspect to it with this uh, central uh, minute hand. But unlike any ordinary regulators, the hour subdial moves around the central axis in 60 minutes and the 12 o'clock position always remain vertical and that's where you will find the Ressens logo. You don't have a seconds indication, but uh, just for info, on previous Type 3 models you could see what they called a runner turning on itself in 3 minutes. And the point of this small indicator was more to have a visual aid showing you that the watch is running. But with this new version, this information has been removed or actually hasn't been made visible. Again, with this desire of freeing up uh, visual space and sticking with this, again, strict minimalist approach. So then you have a day indication with these uh, five days of the weeks, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the weekend being represented uh, by a larger portion of the subdial, and this uh, makes it easy to adapt to any type of weekends, whether starting a Saturday or Friday for others. But this can also be used as an AM-PM indicator. For instance, when the hand is in the lower part, as it is here, well, this means that we're in an AM position. Then this hand keeps trailing along and soon you will know that you're in the afternoon part when you're in the second part of that uh, day. You also have a date function uh, with the pointer here at uh, 6 o'clock uh, indicating the actual date. Then you have a special feature, not a direct chronometrical one, but one that will give you uh, the oil temperature and this one can be useful because when you say oil, well its viscosity will depend on its temperature and as you can imagine this will impact the running of all these gears that we have in this uh, ROX module. So the normal operating temperature are set between 10 and 15 uh, and 40 degrees and uh, this corresponds to this uh, arc. Uh, and but I mean, knowing that your watch is in direct contact with your skin, it shouldn't go much lower than 25 degrees. But a really cool feature is that drilled inside uh, this uh, middle titanium part, you will find seven small holes into which some really small bellows will adapt depending on the oil density. So you will always have the same viscosity and therefore assuring standard operation within the ROX module. Yeah, that's pretty neat. So let's now talk about the winding and setting the time. And this at first can be a little bit tricky, even though at the end it's quite simple. But you just ne need to get uh, used to it uh, and uh, stay calm. And this is even more so important since everything is done by turning the case back. And by doing so, well, you have quite a lot of torque and therefore it is seriously important to do all the following operation nice and smoothly. There are a lot of gears in this small volume and you don't want to stress them out unnecessarily. Be gentle, like always. So remember that this is an automatic watch, but you can nevertheless still wind it manually. So to do so, turn your watch, dial facing down and you have, uh, facing your way, and you have two ways of winding it. You can either turn the case back anti-clockwise and at one point you will feel a small resistance which is normal and this has to do with the magnetic connection. So just continue turning it a bit harder and once the resistance is passed, well you simply continue turning it. But a slightly more efficient way of doing it, uh, I feel, is simply by going back and forth of the Ressence DJ Scratch Special if you see what I mean. But please keep in mind that all the time and date setting operations require you to go back and forth Forth, and this will actually fuel your watch and therefore I don't think it is much needed to fully wind it unless you just need to get it going if your piece was uh, laying on your desk for the last four days and since there are no apparent seconds well just by listening to it you will hear the tic-tac and you know that your watch is running. 
Okay, so let's now go for the serious operations and let's follow the standard operating procedures, the checklist and respect the following order. Set the AM PM info, then the time, then the date and finally the day. But please keep in mind that you should not set the date between 8 PM and 1 AM. Okay, so if I take uh, the position that the watch is in uh, right now, so we see that it's 10 o'clock, more or less nine minutes. We are on the third section in the day section, so we know it's a, on a Wednesday. Since the hand is in the lower part of that day section, we know it is 10 a.m. And the date, well, we can see it here, it's the 24th. So for the little exercise that we're going to do, let's say that we wanted to set it at 4.15 p.m on a Thursday the 2nd, if that exists. So personally, I like to hold my watch nicely in front of me and with my thumb and index, I can now turn the case back very easily. So like I mentioned just before, the, the hand is on the AM portion of that day section and we need it to go on the PM version. So like I said, 10 o'clock. So in the morning, we need to pass the date a little bit, I mean the hours I mean. So as you can see now, uh, I, I was, we were at 10 o'clock, now we're at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and you can see here that the indicator has moved on to the second portion of uh, that little segment, so we're indeed in the PM uh, version. So to set the time, I just do the same, I continue to turn the case back clockwise until the desired time and we wanted to have 4.15. So as you can see now we're at 4 and 15 minutes. Here we are still on a Wednesday but Wednesday afternoon. So now we have two information set correctly and now we want to move the date. Again, I mean watch facing me, I turn the crown in the anti-clockwise direction and every 30 minutes the date will jump. So here you will be able to see this. Okay, we reached the first of the month. I continue by 30 minutes and it should jump to the second. All right, now the date is correct. What I need to do now is put back the time to the desired position. So let's go back, turn it clockwise. So now I'm putting it back at the 4.15 position and 4 o'clock, 15 minutes. We are on the second and we are still in this PM portion of the day, but the day is not correct. So this is the last uh, information that we need to take care of. And we need to add a couple of days. So 15 minutes, okay. And now we're on a Thursday. Now I put back here you see, we're on Thursday. I put back the clock at 4.15 and we're all set. 4 o'clock, 15 minutes, the second. And we are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, fourth section. And on the second part or upper part of uh, this segment, confirming that this is indeed 4.15 PM. Got it? So it's not that immensely complex, you just need to get used to it and follow that order. But if you want to make uh, your life simpler, I highly suggest to keep your timepiece in a watch winder. It will prevent you from going through all these uh, steps uh, by keeping the correct hour, day and date information. But of course, uh, for you, I mean, you will still have to adjust manually for 30 day months or February. So maybe the next challenge for Rossens would be to make an annual calendar version or even a perpetual calendar version. But I guess, I mean, that would be quite an insane development. But who knows? I mean, uh, they have already placed the bar pretty, pretty high, I think. 
So I just uh, mentioned the idea of having a winder and this is even more so pertinent when you take into account that this movement holds a power reserve of only 36 hours but sincerely with all the energy required to move all, uh, all these components I can understand why. I mean they probably even used a stronger spring barrel to achieve this and automatically, automatically this has an impact on the power reserve. So now down to the basics uh, this watch has a diameter of 44 millimeter 15 millimeter in height but with this uh, pebble feel to it I mean it seriously doesn't look big and sits really nicely on the wrist. Personally I have always really appreciated the various watches uh, developed by Ressence and like I said I mean this watch is not a true novelty it's an iteration of the type 3 but I really like again uh, this minimalist approach and I did wear it a bit yeah it's just so cool to look at always something uh, happening uh, it's uh, really like this uh, optical illusion and an illusion which is reinforced with this full black approach and one uh, last and pretty cool thing but all the visible info are luminescent and in the dark well yeah it looks also pretty awesome. Well I hope you enjoyed this review thanks for watching see you real soon and viva creative watchmaking! Thanks.